you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get this engine out. It's been a few days, so I apologize. But I have the engine at the machine shop right now, and my buddy had my lift. He lives a couple blocks from me. I've had his uh, truck on the channel before. He's got a, like a 60, mid-60s C10 that I'm trying to get him to LS swap. He's just pulled out the, the inline six the other day, so he borrowed my engine hoist and my spare stand that I had. I had a spare engine stand that was still in the box. I never used it. Um, so let him borrow that stuff. He brought the hoist back yesterday, so now I'm working on getting this engine out. So got everything pretty much bolted up, ready to come out. I do have to undo the transmission cross member. So basically, this was just held in by, depends how you look at it, because the mount is connected to the rubber mounts, so like the steel mount that I built is connected to the factory um, 350Z rubber mounts with one bolt. That's how that one works. So two bolts to get to this point where I pull it out, and then I have four bolts underneath, underneath the, on the crass, the crass member, the craps member. So I'm going to go underneath there, zip those off, Drop the back of the transmission on my face, and then we'll pull the we'll pull the thing out. So this is a 15, a 15 and a 14, I think. I don't know why they do this. You guys explain this to me. Why? Why? Explain it. And you have a transmission cross member. Why well, they use two different size bolts? I don't understand that. I mean, they're the, they're, they're the same thread, but different size heads. I just don't get it. I don't, I don't got it. So I'll zip this under. Zip this thing down. So should be able to raise this up a little bit. <clears throat> I think I'm actually gonna move this back so I can get some of the weight shifted. What well, might work against me because I'm gonna want to lean it back, but. play the game between too high and tail being too high. So the tricky part with this one guys is there's the the oil pan is so close to there's a power steering line underneath on top of the steering rack it like loops up and comes back down and I already partially crushed it when I was installing the engine a while back so I think I might have just finished it off. So that might might not be a good thing. I've been trying to find where to get one of those because I know I kinked it, but it was still working before. Uh, now when I lowered the back end, I might have just might have just finished it off. So we'll find out about that. We'll give her a yank, yanky spanky. Make sure that I uh, forgot something so I can break something on the way out. Would be the best option, I think. Stuck on. I gotta adjust the load level a little bit, and just want to let you guys know it's a lot easier if you. Well, well, from what I read, it's a lot easier if you undo the shifter first before you start pulling the engine out. Um, I've never done it the other way, but 
I heard, I heard it's a lot easier, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. So let's get to yanking. And I'm dumping fluid everywhere. Oh, I love this hoist. Oh, man. I love it so much. I never... I never remember how much I love this hoist until I have to use it. Frickin' wheels are bad on this thing. It goes sideways. So I'm pulling straight back. It just wants to go straight to the side. I should just get rid of this. You guys that have been around for a while are probably getting sick of me saying that every time I pull a frickin' engine up. Just the wheel by hand. Put the lotion on the skin. So this is the fun part. steering lines, power steering lines, bent shifter, we'll be back into good shape pretty soon. Really just want to get the thing out so I could uh, stop draining the trans fluid all over the place. But I think I actually did that when I pulled it out the first time. The, the shifter didn't really line up right. The proper way to do it would be to unbolt it from down here and then pull the whole mechanism out, but I didn't do that. Didn't do it last time either though. But last time I think I might have bent it slightly. Uh, but it wasn't so bad. Now let's try to get this thing down on the ground. And then we'll call it a day and try to clean the floor up a little bit because it was a mess. Of course, I picked the best possible time to do this when I uh, don't have any I don't have any oil dry <laughs> or towels, so it's just gonna seep, seepy seepy. So we got a mess. We got a mess, boys. Alrighty, guys. So. Here we got the engine out. So this is the Iron Block 5.3. This is coming out. It's got the CDO9 transmission on the back. This is a, a 2008, but it has 5,000 miles on it, plus whatever I added when I bought it. So it's actually a pretty, pretty new one. Collins adapter with the T56 uh, bell housing on it. So that's pretty much all that's done to that thing. And here's the line that I was talking about. This one kind of smacked that little guy. It normally comes up to about here and then comes down but I smacked it on the way in with the oil pan so if you guys know if you're very familiar if you know where I can get this line I'd like to replace it but I haven't been able to find any so you can usually you can find like this whole assembly but I don't want that I just want that line so if you guys know where to get that from let me know let me know so here we go probably gonna try to I don't know maybe if I have time I'll try to clean some of this stuff be like really weird and clean some of this uh, I'm not really sure yet so got the carbon fiber drive shaft back there uh, half full bucket of uh, you know gear oil 
So yeah, this thing really needs to be cleaned and I made a huge mess pulling this thing out. But other than that, I'm waiting on some stuff to come in. So waiting on some stuff to come in so I can put all this back in with the new engine. And I do have the engine at the machine shop right now. It's getting cleaned and it's getting new cam bearings. So when I get that stuff back, uh, I will do the whole like engine assembly. We did the tear down and all that stuff. Do the whole engine assembly. I do have some parts, guys. I got some parts. So we got a whole bunch of parts coming in. This is like turbo box and all this stuff is ready to go in the car. So haven't opened any of it yet. I think I might just do like one big unboxing video and I kind of don't really you know, sometimes it's exciting to when you get the stuff, you open it up and you look at it, but then it sits in an open box in the garage for like three weeks until you decide you want to do something with it. So I decided to just keep everything closed. I've been labeling them based on the tracking numbers when I get the stuff. So I can just keep it there. I know it's in the box and it's not opened and just sitting off to the side. And that's easier for me at this point right now. So that's what I'm doing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. There's a lot of support on the last video. Uh, I normally track videos by views per hour when I upload them just to see how they're doing uh, and I usually get like a hundred views per hour for like the first three to maybe four hours this one had a hundred views per hour for the first 17 hours and it didn't start to deviate until 18 hours so thank you guys for that that was really awesome exciting to see the excitement uh, and people watching that video so that was cool hopefully we can keep that up and We'll get this thing going pretty soon. A lot more to come here. Put something very similar, but a lot lighter in there. So it's gonna be the aluminum block. This is iron. Get rid of these uh, these mounts that I got. I don't know, guys. Should I do like a giveaway or something with these mounts? I've been having people ask me a lot if I can make them mounts for this, this type of setup with the Collins kit and the uh, factory length drive shaft. Maybe I'll just do a giveaway with those. Uh, I, I really have no use for them and they're not really of any value to me. So maybe we'll maybe we'll do that Let me know what you guys think uh, Thanks for watching. Have a good one Before you have a good one. I got one more thing to show you. I also picked up uh, a set of heads So they're the 799 heads. I did find these guys Actually the same person that I bought the the block from so he got a different set of heads and these things are actually pretty nice looking pretty clean so uh, he, he checked them all with fluid, made sure they weren't leaking, everything seems to be good, and they're actually pretty clean, so I might not have to do a whole lot with these things. Maybe scrape some junk off, and we should be good to go. So that's exciting, and that's about it, guys. 